Hey CT family, coming to you tonight with Pastor Chantry with a conversation about some disciplines that he has been teaching about here at church, but we want to dive into them a little bit deeper. Before we get started, we want to give a few reminders. One, you're invited to join the live stream Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We're going to be bringing the church to you in your home when you can't be with us. Also, download the Calvary Tabernacle app. It is available in the Apple App Store and for my wife, the Google Play Store. <laughs> also, check the website, ctbittenville.com, where you can see opportunities to serve, as well as you can give online, and your giving is appreciated, especially right now, because the church is, we are still operating at this time. Yeah, we are, and, and thank you for your giving. Uh, I know that this is a tough time for everybody, uh, but thank you for continuing to give, and uh, we still support our missionaries. Uh, our community table is still doing outreach in our community and helping people that are high risk, uh, our elderly, uh, serving meals, etc. through the week. So thank you for giving. Um, I, I would say that, you know, during this time, it's more important than ever for us to um, talk about uh, some of the things we're about to address in the way of disciplines of our lives. And we've heard this multiple times. Um, we, we hear this all the time, but uh, we feel the different, you know, atmosphere, the change that's happening around us. We all feel that. Um, I feel that as a pastor. Uh, you feel that, Pastor Allen. We, we are all feeling the effects of this. Um, but more important than ever, I think right now, uh, we need to, to make sure that we are disciplining our lives uh, to, to make it during this time, through this time. Uh, these are disciplines that we should be practicing every day of our lives before there was ever a coronavirus uh, that entered into our vocabulary, but it's more important now than ever. Absolutely, because uh, right now when we're disconnected from the church body, we don't need to be disconnected from God, right. you know, uh, right. and if our entire relationship with Him is dependent on the group, then our relationship's probably pretty shallow. Right. And, and I would say to that, you know, uh, that if we are spiritual people, then the disconnect from the spiritual place, the church, uh, will not affect our spiritual disciplines. And so I, I want to talk to you, we want to talk to you tonight about um, just, just those things that we need to make sure that we're doing in our lives that we've heard a lot, but we need to make sure we're doing these things, and then some how-tos. Absolutely, because just the same way as a gym may be closed right now, a physically fit person is still working out. Absolutely. They're still, they're still uh, exercising, lifting weights, hitting the jogging path, and so spiritually, just because I can't get to the church doesn't mean I can't right. uh, be spiritual. Right. Uh, spiritual isn't something I do, it's something I am. Absolutely. So I would start us off with a question to get us just thinking uh, about this. Are we being mindful not to simply disconnect from the church um, and these disciplines in our lives during this season that we're in? Absolutely, because if I'm disconnecting from the church and I'm disconnecting from my, my, uh, those practices, yeah. what am I filling that time with? Absolutely, uh, and it's being filled with, with something. Absolutely, right? uh, I've watched more press conferences uh, the past two weeks <laughs> than I have in 34 years. Yeah, and yeah absolutely, so me too. If I'm not intentional about what I do with my spiritual life, something else is going to take over that time. Yeah. Yes. Are we are we feeling the time that the church used to have with other things? And that's important that we guard against that um, because it's very easy during this time that we feel such confusion and uncertainty and fear. It's, it's really easy for us to isolate and, and you know, just um, seclude ourselves to doing these things, binge, binge watching. And, mm. and, and, and these things are not bad within themselves. Um, it, it's, I hope that you are having some things that you can do that take your mind off of um, maybe the seriousness of life and, and do some enjoyable things. But we have to be, be balanced in that. Absolutely, because uh, the things I allow into my life and into my heart uh, those are going to produce a life. And, Absolutely. Uh, so when I keep these disciplines in place, you know, I, that's going to keep me through this season because if the routine of going to the church, you know, that can't be the only thing that keeps me disciplined. No. It's just going to the church. Right. Uh, you know, I wonder how many people have actually, and I don't say this critically, I, do, I really say this curiously. Yeah. Uh, how many people 
open their Bible through the week other than when the, the minister says, open the Bible to, you right. know, to the book of John. You know, some people probably haven't opened their Bible in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, or haven't prayed outside of that group prayer that, that takes place. And so um, we're given an illustration in Scripture about somebody who, who exemplifies to us um, prayer and discipline uh, of being, being one with God. And that's the, the life of Daniel. Yeah, you know, because we were talking about this before, that Daniel, it's in Daniel 6 and 10, where he had, the Bible talks about that uh, the king had signed the order and that you couldn't worship anyone else, you couldn't pray to anything else. Yeah. And so the Bible says that Daniel goes to his house, he opens the window, and he prays. And it says, it ends that verse by saying, as he had been doing previously. That's awesome. I love that passage of Scripture. He, he was doing it before... Uh, he, he was doing it before the moment of crisis. Right. Right. He didn't start when things went bad. Yeah. But now some of you may be saying, well, I've never really prayed or read my Bible. You can start right now. Like, you can start today. So don't say, well, I didn't do it before. Yeah. I can't do it now. Right. But uh, if you had the habit, keep the habit. If you've never had the habit, start. Start the habit. It's more important than ever for you to start doing that now. Um, so that you can um, make it through this, you know. Um, let's talk about some of those practical things that we can do, in in our in the way of discipline disciplining ourselves. Um, the one the one uh, obvious thing that we've heard a, a lot about is prayer, and and how we've got to be people of prayer during this time. Um, you know, people hear that and they're like, yeah, yeah, I I, I agree, and I, I need to be a person of prayer, but. I've noticed that within myself at times when, when things are so chaotic around me that I have to have some, some, some guidance Absolutely. in what to pray and how to pray. So I think that um, it's very important that we are intentional during these times. And, and so let's talk about some, some prayer helps, some things that can help us in praying during this season. Absolutely. I think one of the things is an encouragement is I would give don't be intimidated to say, well, I don't know how to pray. Yeah. Um, my four-year-old, we were uh, getting ready for bed the other night, and I said, hey, buddy, let's say our prayers. And he said, well, I don't know how to pray. And so it was on me to say, well, this is how you pray. And it makes me think of Jesus, because the disciples said, hey, we don't teach us how to pray. Right, right. And that's when you get the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He kind of walks us through a pattern of not just what to say, as right. in these words, but pray for provision, pray for guidance, pray for uh, direction. Absolutely. You know, he gives us a, a pattern. I need, I, I, I'm an easily distracted person. Sure. Um, and so. You are. I, <laughs> yeah. I keep looking at the people off camera. Um, I'm an easily distracted person, so I have to have a pattern in my prayer. Yeah. Because if I don't have a pattern, yeah. I'm. I am too, though, and, and I get that, and, I, and it helps me to have a guide, yeah, something to, to go by so that I make sure that I hit the, the points of prayer that I want to hit and, and that my prayer is effective prayer, you know. Absolutely, and uh, we, uh, we're going to share uh, through our website some prayer guides for you to pray with us, yeah. uh, and also, again, not to say, hey, pray this. But they give you just an idea of a direction that you can... Uh, Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm not sure how can I have some help yeah. uh, in our spiritual disciplines. Uh, you could... Another area that we need to focus on in this time is reading our Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, getting getting into the Word of God right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's important um, for us to know uh, God's voice and to hear His voice speaking to us. Uh, one of the greatest ways to hear God speak is through His Word. And, and so we've, we've got to be in His Word, reading His Word. You know, even if that's a verse a day, uh, even if that's just starting your morning off with that verse, and then um, something I found helpful is that throughout that day, uh, you set a reminder on your phone. And that verse that you read in the morning, 
Um, when that alarm goes off, you go and you read that verse again. You do that three times a day. And it helps you to meditate on the Word of God, to think on that Word, and to allow it to, to really saturate your mind, your spirit. Your Absolutely. Heart. And it's easier than ever because you can download a, a Bible app, like uh, the YouVersion app that has every translation. Yeah. Uh, every and, and don't overthink it. Just find one that works yeah. for you. Uh, is this the, no, just get a Bible app. Read Read it. Use a, the daily verse they give you. Use a reading plan. Absolutely. Uh, that helps you to, because one of the things when I speak to new believers, they say, well, I don't know where to start. A reading plan gives you a great place. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, it does. To start. And right now, you could read through the life of Jesus, or you could read through uh, a reading plan on anxiety or peace. Uh, and that's available. Uh, that's available to you. Uh, there's so many different different um, apps and, and tools out there for us to access and to use. So really our excuse of, you know, I don't really understand the words that I'm reading from King James or whatever, that's, that's invalid anymore. It's just us disciplining our lives to do that daily and not overwhelming ourselves with doing too much. Yeah, you know? and something cool we're going to do, uh, we're going to be launching soon, is we're going to be doing some online Bible studies, and we'll be, yeah. you'll be able to see that information. We're going to share that, that you can actually jump in, and uh, we're going to be leading a Bible study. So if you don't Excited know how to study that. the Word of God, we can walk you through that. Uh, I think another area that's hard, and this may be the hardest when we're disconnected from the church, is worship. Yeah. Um, because you kind of get used to the band and the, those wonderfully talented people that are leading at your churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can be weird to do in your house. It can. It can absolutely be, be weird. It can be different just because we're not used to it. That's yeah. really the only reason. Um, you know, a lot of us, are, are we feel freedom when it's just us in the car and we're, you know, belting out a, a worship song. Um, primarily because, you know... Um, Nobody can hear you and judge you, and so you you feel that freedom. But you know, I've I've said it a lot that for you know, worship is a lifestyle. It's it's not just a thing that we do on Sunday. It's a lifestyle lived out um, loud each and every day. So now putting that into practice in our homes is more important right now than ever before. Absolutely, and you can just you know we'll we'll share a playlist that you can check out and you can uh, listen to some music, but. You don't have to have uh, the the band. You can yeah. You can turn on uh, a Spotify playlist and worship along, or maybe you play an instrument. Yeah. Play that instrument. Absolutely. To God. Sing. Get your family around and and yeah. play play s some songs. And, it, and let's worship. be clear. That'll feel weird the first time. Sure. And the second time, but that can become natural. Yeah. Time of worship. And you know what? You can have a move of God in your house. Absolutely. The same way you would have a move of God. In, absolutely in the church you just I think you just have to expect it yes and and that is that is where we need to get to during this time of uh, being comfortable worshiping God in our home um, and, and giving God the praise that he deserves in, in our homes and and leading heads of households leading your children in that worship and um, you know I, I will say right here uh, that during the live stream, um, if you're having a hard time engaging in that, we've only done this once or twice now, yeah. I guess, but if that's hard for you or weird for you, maybe you need to change something up. You yeah. know, maybe you need to actually get dressed for the day and not just sit on the couch in your PJs, you know, um, with cereal in your hand while yeah. you're watching <laughs> the service. You know, this is not a show. Um, although it may feel that way a little bit while I'm watching my church, but engaging yourself in that is, is yeah. very important and engaging in worship and many of you did that I heard great reports of people who felt the power of God as soon as the first note was played and they lifted up their hands and tears began to flow and that's beautiful that's what we're after Absolutely. that's what we want it's what you, God wants you can I think praying reading the Bible worshiping when I can do it alone I can do it online yeah you know and then I think that's gonna make when when we get to come back together think it's going to be uh, that much sweeter. It's going to be amazing. That much yeah, more. It will. That much more awesome. Because we're still getting together. We're just not, we're getting together digitally. Right. Um, we're right. Uh, doing, uh, you know, online services and devotionals, conversations. We're going to be doing 
uh, online Bible studies, yeah. lean, lean into that as you can because um, absolutely take advantage of it. The, the disciples didn't have this. Uh, you no. know, they, they had to go underground and Paul had to write a letter and it had to get delivered and it had to get read and passed around. And so we can have the Word of God instantly. Absolutely. Uh, man, what a blessing to... To have the technology that we have today, absolutely. Um, to be but, able to assemble in some way, shape, or form, right? A- absolutely. Yeah. It's this is not what they were dealing with uh, back then, right? You know, we right. are uh, in America right now. We are far from persecuted. Absolutely. We are uh, momentarily inconvenienced. Absolutely, <laughs> we are. Uh, and, and I would say that we need to rejoice. Make sure that we are rejoicing in the Lord. And not in our situation. Absolutely. Because we can get lost in the situation that surrounds us and forget who we're worshiping. We're Absolutely. not worshiping our things and our conveniences and, and, and all of our wants. We're worshiping God. Absolutely. My worship isn't tied to the Dow Jones. Right. Uh, it's not tied to the economy. Absolutely. It's not tied to... It's not tied to any of that. No. It, um, you know, what, whatever, uh, whatever our leaders do in government... God's still worthy. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever happens, my disciplines are personal between me, between me and God. And yeah. I think that's a great spot for us to just kind of wrap up tonight. Uh, Pastor's going to leave you with a couple of questions for you to talk about with your family or with your friends, whoever you're gathered with. He's going to challenge you with a couple of questions, and then we're going to leave it to you, to Pastor. Absolutely. I would just want you to to ask these couple of questions and just amongst your family there whoever's gathered uh, with you watching tonight uh, we do this on our team and we discuss wins and opportunities and we discuss what's working and we then discuss where can we improve what areas can we improve in so i would ask you to 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 do this together as a family discuss a win in regards to how you are keeping these disciplines during this season that we're in. A a win in regards to how you are keeping these disciplines alive in this season. And then discuss an opportunity that you have to do better in one of these areas that that we need to be disciplined in in your life. Um, And and I I would ask you to do that together, discuss that, have a moment here and and discuss that amongst yourselves and and then have a, a time of prayer together. We, we love you so very much, and we, again, I said it yesterday in my little video to the church, but we miss y'all uh, a ton and wish that we were together uh, in person, but we, we are doing it this way for a little while, and that's okay, um, because I believe great things are going to happen through this. I believe lives are still going to be impacted and changed, and, and God is still speaking to us if we will attune our ear to His voice, if we will listen if we would give him the opportunity that he's still speaking to us uh, right where we're at in this season uh, in our world in this time of calamity and chaos. So I love you very much. We thank you for being a part of our conversation tonight. Uh, God bless you and until next time.